Thanks for staying with us. It's time now to go to the press, see what the headlines are on some of our national uh, dailies. And uh, to discuss this with me is uh, Professor Kamilu Sani Fage, Department of Political Science, Bayero University, Kanu. He's our guest this morning. Good morning and welcome to the program, sir. Good morning and thank you for having me. Okay, we're beginning with the, the, the business NG. And the leading headline here is Frequent Network Breakdown Affecting Our Business Bank Customers Lament. Uh, last week we saw some banks, a few of them, uh, their network was so bad for the entire week and some of them didn't even have the, uh, the courtesy to apologize to the people or explain to the people. Some of them now had this information go out um, a few hours uh, into even the day, maybe on, on, a, on a Tuesday, they now sent information that the banks may not operate two hours to the time that they were supposed to go offline. And even then, this network issue had started on Monday, and Tuesday was, okay, Tuesday was a public holiday, I think. It had started on Monday, and they did not do anything about it. So, customers are the ones complaining now, but I'd like you to t speak to the uh, fact that... Uh, um, uh, businesses are being affected by what these um, banks go through, uh, you know, tentatively. That's what they say. They go through a lot of problems uh, technically and because of the network and all that. So what was your experience like, first of all, when this happened? Did it affect you? Yeah, you know, I, I'm not a business person, but at least, uh, you know, a few things that one has to do uh because of this issue of uh cashless uh you know policy so we have to rely on the, the e-banking and uh, it doesn't it didn't work then so i think uh if i am affected uh, in my own small way i could imagine how businesses could be uh, affected so i think this is a very serious thing especially given the fact that we uh health bent on uh you know having this cashless uh, uh policy and besides you know uh, there, there is no restitution if somebody loses something uh they they cannot even they do not even apologize they don't do anything perhaps the only time that uh you see the banks uh hurry in uh, notifying you is when they get tax on this uh, commission on that and so on but as far as other thing is concern is the usual thing that nobody will come and say this is it they will not explain what happened they will not even apologize and uh, so i think uh, this is a, a bad thing for our own business okay. we have all this uh, this um, stories as well on the business ng cbn injects 543.5 million naira or dollars rather to stabilize the naira and then close to that we have Nigeria's debt crisis worsens. 69% of total expenditure spent on loan repairments. I don't know if we can, we can marry those two headlines together. Let's begin with uh, stabilizing the Naira and injecting so much dollars into the system. Yeah, you see, I, I think in one of the papers, the, the central bank governor is saying that it's a good decision that they have taken to plot the Naira. But the fact is that um, we are an import uh, consumer society. So plotting the Naira, this is what it will amount. We'll have to always uh, inject money in order to stabilize it. And uh, I think the reality is that the government has to look at this policy. Actually, it's the cause of the problem by plotting the Naira. Uh, you, you, you don't expect to get anything positive out of that uh, to me um because like i said we are a consumer uh, you know economy we are importer economy if countries that are exporters industrialized countries plot their currency i think they don't need to you know uh, inject in order to stabilize it because the market will determine these things and there will be high demand for their goods and services but here we are. We keep on trying to borrow things just because we are told to do so by the IMF and World Bank. So we keep on doing it blindly. 
and uh, here we are mm, after plotting after reducing we have to come and stabilize and so on so i think uh, this is a uh, this should have been part of the uh, uh, feedback that will inform our policy makers uh, to have a receipt that they are pursuing uh, uh, on, the, on the Naira. Yeah, I don't know, because this is one of the, maybe I didn't understand it well, but this was one of like the crimes, in quote, uh, of the former CBN governor, that he did, had no business trying to stabilize the Naira. He should have uh, let it just uh, flow and let market forces do their thing. They, so uh, the new government came, floated the Naira, and uh, that's what led to the spiraling of the Naira to heights that we did not even uh, understand. Now they are also trying to stabilize the Naira, doing the same kind of things that the, the previous CBN governor did, and they say it was so, so bad. The Naira should have just uh, been on its own, and then we could have been doing whatever else that we needed to do to make sure it is strong enough. I don't know why they're going back to these, or maybe I was the one who did not understand well. But our debt profile has worsened, our debt crisis has worsened, 69% of total expenditure spent on loan repayment, according uh, to this story. That's the second story that I, I read uh, at the same time. So, what do you think? Yeah, that one too is a very bad omen for the country, where you have almost 70% of your expenditure on debt services. You know, you don't have capital for even, uh, you know, Current, current project, let alone uh, capital project. So these are the things that we are talking about, that the government uh, should now look at these things, because actually there is no economy that can survive with uh, such a huge amount, you know, being spent on uh, debt services because you don't have uh, uh, money for, or you don't have capital for uh, recurrent expenses, you don't have capital for uh, capital expenses, so you'll be stagnating and the economic crisis will uh, worsen by the day unless, unless a uh, serious decision is taken uh, to address this situation and part of the problem is we keep on borrowing despite you know the huge amount that we are spending uh, you just hear over the news tomorrow there is a plan to borrow this there is another plan so the more you borrow the more you now uh, spend on debt services and the more you go deeper deeper into the debt crisis yeah, so well, they're making it look like it's because of servicing this debt that we are, we are, they, they, the expenditure is getting to places that is not, that are not helping uh, Nigerians. Uh, but no mention is made of people who are taking this money. You are spending, you have voted maybe, maybe a hundred million to, to, to pay a debt. And out of this hundred million that you have voted, uh, there's other money that is not official that goes into the coffers of private individuals, maybe up to 300 million in the same instance where you're paying. So you are telling us that, okay, the money, Nigeria's money is depleting because a lot of this money is going back into paying off debts. Um, I don't know. I, somehow I just feel that's a very cheap excuse to say that's why our, our debt is worsening, the crisis is worsening. I think as a person, if corruption is clipped, uh, in the wing, maybe it wouldn't be this bad as it is now. That's just me thinking aloud. No, no, yeah, it is true. Um, you have to take uh, double measures. One, you have to seriously cut corruption. And two, you have to seriously cut uh, unnecessary expenditure. Everywhere in the world, when you, uh, you have economic crisis, what you do is to cut the cost of governance. Because by the time you keep on maintaining that issue of uh, huge government expenses, you have to either borrow, you have to either increase the tax or uh, print more money. Whichever you do, uh, it will add up to uh, the economic crisis. So I think the government has to look at uh, this. And that is what I was saying earlier on, that the government has to 
thing. This information, the what we are having now, should have been a serious input into our policy uh, making process. That uh, look, there yeah, we are now spending almost seventy percent of our expenses uh, uh, on uh, debt services. So how what how do we go from here? Then the thing is. We now can face inflation, I mean, uh, corruption, as you have said, rightly said, and we also cut the cost of governance. By the time we do these things, I think we'll see ourselves trying to stabilize the economy because that is what has been the practice all over the world. And that is the simplest and the cheapest economic solution to our own problem. Okay, let's move to Nature News right now. Nature News um, has a has two headlines here. Flood wreaks havoc on uh, Plateau, displaces over 80 households. And then on top of that, we have Sokoto government votes 33 billion naira for new dams to boost Fadama. Okay, we, we're talking dams, uh, dams for Fadama. Fadama is an agri project, I think. And then we're talking flood that is wreaking havoc somewhere else. So I, I just want us to marry the two together. Creating more dams, uh, will it solve the problem of Nigeria? Uh, will it pro solve the problem of flooding on the one hand and also solve the problem of agriculture uh, by irrigation farming uh, on the other hand? No, I think it wouldn't um, uh, for the time being. It, it, you see, it's just part of the way to embezzle money. We have so many dams that are not properly maintained, so that is why we have uh, plodding like what, what happened in uh, Borno, Meduguri. And um, one, uh, beside their poor maintenance, they are not effectively being utilized. Sokoto has uh, uh, many dams, that could have been, had it been they utilized them, I think it would be uh, a, a good thing. Uh, like here uh, in Kano, we have over 20 dams that are not being used. All over the Federation, uh, we have so many dams that are not being used, that are not being maintained. So creating more dams, I think, is creating more problem. Instead of putting such amount of money in uh, you know creating new dams, I think they are better utilized uh, in maintaining the, the ones that we have, so that we avoid the problem of uh, flood. And then they are better utilized so that uh, the dams are used for uh, agriculture. Padama is a word, uh, a house award, uh, which shows uh, a, like uh, you know. Uh, um, Farming is not real farming, but uh, it shows a wetland. That is what Padama is about. So it's a kind of um, irrigational project that uh, they have to do. Like Bacalories, there are other dams are there in Sokoto, which I think if the government is serious on uh, using Padama project, they should have resuscitate those dams and uh, make sure that uh, they are put into effective uses. Mm. I think so too. Uh, sometimes, like you said, maybe just this is just a way of siphoning money because maintenance of the existing dams is not being done. And it's just like, um, it reminds me of ASU, uh, one of the cries of ASU, when the federal government is thinking about creating more universities, when the existing ones are not being maintained the way they should be maintained, the money is not being voted to these universities and they're still creating other universities and we wonder how that will work. Uh, but. Another headline here, still on Nature News, is federal government kicks as Oshun government shuts down mining company. Obviously, the Oshun state government knows the reason why this uh, mining company needed to be shut down because of various reasons. But now the federal government is not happy about that. So this brings back to the fore, uh, the discussions about uh, uh, the role that the state could play in this mining as well. Well, if it, if it belongs to the federal government, uh, what about the people who feel the impact of these uh, mining activities and all that? So Oshun State has taken this step. The federal government is kicking against it. But I'd like to hear your own take about this. What kind of power should the state government have over things that are being mined in their or activities that happen in their states? 
Yeah, you see, it's uh, part of the negligence. Um, uh, mining, you know, all resources, uh, uh, mineral resources are, are controlled by the uh, federal. federal government. So where the federal government doesn't have any concrete policy on it, it is subject to abuse. Uh, and that is why the state government have to come in, because you allow illegal miners to continue uh, their own uh, activities there. So I think there has to be a clearly defined policy. Like the way we have on petroleum, you see nobody will go into, you know, uh, oil business, uh, you know, uh, in, in Nigeria because it is clearly a federal uh, area. So the same thing with mineral resources. They are supposed to be federal government uh, area. But the fact that there is no any policy on that, that is why state government tried to fill in the vacuum. Because if they don't do that, what will happen is that illegal mining will thrive in their own state. And all the hazards that are, are associated with uh, illegal mining. You see, part, if we now look at what is happening in Zapara, it's part of the problem. Because people are now coming, you even allow foreigners to come and do whatever they want to do, and nobody has, uh, you know, they put an eye on them. So I think there has to be a synergy between the federal government and the state government. If the state government wants to control the thing, or at least look up after it, they should go through the federal government and get the approval so that whatever they do, it will not be a government committing illegalities, but it will, should be a, a thing that is properly approved uh, now, and so that uh, we avoid this jurisdictional conflict that we are seeing now uh, between the federal government and the state government as to uh, who owns what and why are we doing that. So I think there has to be a clearly defined policy in order to arrest the problem. Yeah, because if uh, I, what if the mine is bringing in security? What if the mines or the miners are, uh, are leaving the laid down rules and doing what is very, very bad to the environment? Uh, they, are, they, are, they are not taking uh, into consideration what is happening to the environment and all that and is affecting the state negatively. And the state is trying to get to, through to the federal government to do something, to take an action, because the federal government doesn't have a policy that uh, will arrest the situation uh, when it arises and they're dragging their feet because they're still making money out of uh, those mines and all that. Uh, does the state government have the moral right to do the needful to protect its citizens and all that? Because these are questions that we should be asking ourselves. These people are on ground facing whatever they are facing and the federal government is just collecting the money and giving back pittance to the state government. I, I wonder how long that will continue I'm sure that's the reason why even we have a, a commission, Niger Delta Commission, because of this thing, so that the people on ground can be seeing these things and reporting back and taking some necessary action before the federal government steps in. But I don't know. Like you said, they should go through the legal channels and get approval and all that. But when that, the federal government is dragging their feet, I don't know whether I should support the governors to take the, the, the requisite action to halt a situation that could bring danger to the state and all. Well, um, we'll, we'll move now to Daily Trust newspaper. Uh, one headline in the Daily Trust newspaper, a small headline on the left corner there, is um, uh, higher interest rate painful for borrowers but necessary to control inflation. That is according to the CBN. I don't know um, what what they mean by that it means that um it is good for the country but it's it, even though it's not good for the people and i don't know who should come first whether it is the people or it's the country i thought the people make up the country and whatever is good for the people will be good for the country but i don't know the explanation that the cbn has given is that it's good for the economy it's good to stop inflation and i don't know if actually that is the reason or that is stopping inflation in the first place yeah, you see what what, uh, what the uh, central governor said is that um, higher interest uh, rate will cut inflation because uh, it will reduce the money circulation in circulation, and uh, that is how it will reduce it. But I think um, 
the policies are more you know negative than positive uh, because the more you have higher interest rate the more you know industrialists and uh, you know business people will not borrow money and inject it into production and the more now you close more industries and uh, you know they, they will there will be unemployment and then when you have unemployment there is no production then you have social problem and still inflation will increase so i think that is what i'm saying that uh, our policy makers are in a state of denial we have tried a policy and it doesn't work uh, the right thing is in any public policy is for you now to use the part on ground as feedback so that you adjust. By the time you keep on denying what is happening, uh, you will be going deeper, deeper into uh, the crisis. Like what is happening now, we have been trying this higher interest rate, higher interest. But actually, any time the, the uh, policy and uh, the policy makers meet, they will increase it, hoping that by increasing it, by increasing it, they will reduce inflation. But they are seeing the reverse of what they are uh, saying that, uh, like I said, people don't borrow, and then industries don't have the capital to do, and now you have in play, you know, a closure of industries, and now inflation will increase, unemployment increases. So I think the, the government should not see its own interests as different from that of the people. After all, people are the government we are not even even under military the people are the government not the other way around so i think the policy makers have to be realistic they have to see the situation that um inflation is part you know unimaginable you cannot imagine the rate of inflation uh, the reason why they don't see the inflation is because it is you know a kind of aggregate you take things and now average and say like the way you do per capita you take uh, everybody and divide by the number of people so that is what what is happening but actually uh, inflation is uh, actually a part of the problem that uh, is affecting the society and in, in fact it is a part of the reasons why we have hunger and poverty so prevalent in nigeria now Okay, let's take um, maybe a final story from the Punch newspaper. Uh, Naira for crude, three refineries plan PMS production. Dangote awaits NNPC supply. Uh, remember that the, uh, the Minister of uh, uh, Finance has said that the uh, uh, Naira for crude has begun since October 1, even though we still had reports that they think the, pro the project or the program has not begun, but now they're saying that it had begun since uh, the 1st of October uh, 2024. We thank God for that if truly it has happened because sometimes pronouncements are made and people who are concerned come out to say it is a lie, it has not started. In this report, Naira for crude, three refineries plan PMS production, which I think is a good thing if that is it, but Dangote awaits NNPC supply is another part of that uh, headline, which means even if it has started, the supply has not been done. Maybe it has been paid for, but the supply has not been done. So uh, it's as good as not happening yet. But I'd like you to uh, speak to the fact that this is happening at this time and what you think the impact would be on the Nigerian economy. You see, if uh, under normal circumstances, if uh, uh, we have rent Naira for crude and then the, the refineries take off, ideally we are going to see the cost of uh, uh, oil c come down because so many things that are associated with uh, the cost of uh, uh, oil in nigeria will be cut down like issue of transportation issue of uh, you know storage issue of uh, insurance and so many th things that are uh, you know accompanying uh, you know importation of, of oil the other thing is uh, if you make it in naira it will not be subject to that uh, volatile you know naira exchange ideally all these things will bring down the cost of uh, oil in nigeria but this is not what we are going to see 
uh, because already if you look at all the politics around the issue of Dongote and other things, the, the, the government, despite, I mean, NNPC, despite all these things that ideally could have bring the cost of uh, petroleum, they refuse to. You know, they are putting uh, this in there are the major uh, takers of it, uh, of takers, and they determine the thing. So they don't allow the market to determine. They don't allow anything. So I think we are not likely going to see any drastic uh, fall in the cost of uh, uh, petroleum. Perhaps there will be a, a little bit stabilizing, uh, stab I, I mean, uh, coming down of the cost, but not so seriously, because the whole calculation of the oil is with the uh, international market, and the international market is in dollar, so they will now count uh, how much it is going to be in dollar. Even if we don't import oil, they will do that one, and Nigerians will not see the change. Okay, well, let's hope that we will prove you wrong and we will see a change and the, f the fuel price will come so low that we will get back to maybe 100 naira per liter of fuel. Uh, right now we are seeing CNG and uh, we have like a, a 50 a CNG stations servicing uh, 200 million people in Nigeria. That's even one of the headlines and all that. And we don't know how we're going to survive in this. Even those that are able to get this CNG um, because their buses have converted are still charging the same fee as the people who are using petrol. So it's one and the same thing. Uh, but this is where we have to drop it uh, this morning. We'd like to thank you, uh, Professor, yeah. for coming Before on the program. We go, I, I'm not praying for that, but I, I would want uh, oil to come down because living standard will come down. But mm. that is the logical explanation of how things are in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. Because the people who care about it, who benefit from it, they don't want it to be uh, that cheap. Mm. Well, you see? Okay, well, <laughs> thank you so much, Professor, for coming on the program this morning. Have a lovely day. Thank you very much for having me. We've been talking to uh, Professor Kamilu Sani Fage uh, of the Department of Political Science, Bayero University, Kanu. We were reviewing the papers, looking at the headlines that made it to the front pages of some of our national dailies. We're now going to take a break, and when we return, we'll be talking River State and the political turmoil therein.